I'm hoping those discussions will continue and intensify over the coming days. There's been some correspondence between myself and Boris Johnson, between my ministers and UK government ministers, uh, and we don't yet have a number that Scotland will uh, welcome here, uh, but I hope to get to that uh, as soon as practically possible. But if we take the example of the Syrian resettlement programme, ultimately Scotland uh, welcomed more refugees here than our strict population share uh, would have suggested. So Scotland stands ready and willing. There's lots of work to be done, lots of practical arrangements. But of course, as well as living up to our responsibility to give refuge to people fleeing horrific circumstances like those we're seeing in Afghanistan right now, as the Syrian example has shown us, we stand to gain a lot as well. Many of the Syrian refugees who came here are contributing massively to Scotland, you know, establishing businesses, you know, working to make a contribution. So this is not just a, a one-way traffic. There's lots of mutual benefit here. Yes, I said that pretty explicitly last week. I, I'll say that again. 20,000 over what they describe as the long term, 5,000 this year, I don't think uh, properly uh, responds to the scale of the challenge. So I would call on them to do more. Uh, but whatever the number is, uh, we need to make sure that Scotland is ready and willing to play its full part. Uh, look, I, I do support calls. Uh, I support calls uh, to ensure that there isn't a cut and run uh, operation in Afghanistan, that uh, you know, NATO countries uh, are there meeting their responsibilities for as long as is necessary. Um, I think it is deeply regrettable that the current situation we're seeing unfold right now has been allowed uh, to develop in the way that it has. But we have to go forward from where we are right now. And the world has a massive responsibility towards people in Afghanistan. And it's really important that that responsibility is lived up to.